Hi guys, this is Stephanie from Milkshed and I am here with my latest yarn chat. Uh, I was just thinking that it feels like I haven't done this in a while and that's because I haven't. It just I just realized that it's been a month, I mean thereabouts, since I put a video up, which just feels really crazy. Um, part of the reason for that is that normally I do them kind of every two weeks where I do an unboxing for Fiberista Club and then I also do one of these yarn chats and this month if you are a regular viewer of the videos or you follow along on the blog you'll notice that I didn't put up an unboxing video. Um, so I will obviously chat about that a little bit. Uh, I have some finished objects. I got a radio. So Alan is traveling for, hey bunny, she's going to ignore me. It's okay. Um, Alan is traveling for work just tonight. It's more of an errand than a work trip, and I actually offered to do this one, but he wanted to, so I'm not going <laughs> to say no to staying home while he's on the road. Um, so I'm sure we'll see appearances from Baxter and radio, because it's just me to entertain them this evening. Um, it is 8.40 on Monday. It's pretty late and that is because it is hot. My office for some reason is like the hottest room in the house. Um, Wyoming is, uh, as they say, dry heat. So it usually doesn't get too miserable. But for some reason, the rest of the house stays really comfortable. And my office is just horrible. So I've had to ha I've had like the blinds down and a fan on all day long. And I just had to wait for it to like cool down enough <laughs> to be bearable to be in this room. So it's a little late, but nobody's here and I got nothing better to do so why not um I will yeah share some finished objects I will show you what I got for Fiberista Club and kind of talk about why I didn't put up the video for that I have just a few purchases very very few actually I have some things in progress so we got a lot to talk about yeah so first things first, since there's usually a video up by now for Fiberista Club and I chose not to do it that this month, um, I might as well just talk about that. So the first thing is that I, I mean, I filmed a whole video. I filmed like an unboxing and I talked about a bunch of stuff and I was kind of like, I'm not really into this anymore. Not like the club. I just, I just don't really want to do this anymore. <laughs> like I filmed unboxings because it was like, I mean, I like watching them, <laughs> quite frankly, and it was like a way to test out this whole video thing and test out YouTube, and then I realized like th there are people who are just podcasting and chatting, and I can do that too. I don't, I mean, I can. I don't know if anybody watches it, but I can do it, and I have a lot of fun doing it, so it was like I don't really need to do the unboxings anymore as a way to just like find something to film. So I filmed the whole thing um, and I even went as far as like editing it and finishing the file and I was just like, I'm not into this. I don't really care. I don't think, look, I think I've put up enough that people like get the gist by now and I just don't really want to do it anymore. The other thing is that I get so many comments from people who have seen those videos and have subscribed to the club and then have gone on to love it, like it, hate it, all mix of things. And I just started feeling like really personally responsible for how people were spending their money based on my unboxing videos. It just didn't sit well with me. Like, of course I want everybody to love the club, but if you don't love the club and you signed up because you watched my video, I just felt like horrendously guilty about that. And it just didn't sit well with me. So... I, I mean, I imagine I'll still like share what I got, definitely, but I don't imagine that we will be doing dedicated unboxing videos anymore. Um, so the other thing is that I have decided to cancel Fiberista Club. It's like a mix of reasons that I will get into, but you know, if I've already, I still have a few months left on my prepay and I am definitely not asking for a refund. I'm going to keep getting those. I think I have like two months left, so probably July and August. I think I was set to renew in September. Um, and I've decided just not to cancel and just get out the route or receive the remaining of my prepay. So I was thinking like, if I've already canceled, like what's the point of still doing these? I don't know. For, for all those reasons, I just decided not to do it anymore. So you guys have not seen what I got for June and you're actually not going to see what I got for June because I have already traded it. Um, I will maybe pause right here and insert what I received originally, just so you guys can see. Okay, June 2015. 
by Barista Club. It looks like we're getting yarn from Succulent Fiber. We're really excited for this month for a lot of reasons, but particularly because of the creative process we were able to employ as we prepared for our sixth shipment. This month's yarn has been custom blended, milled, and dyed as an exclusive line for our members. In your box, you'll find a custom on-trend color that's a must-have for this season. We've had yarn custom milled in lace fingering and worsted weights this month with a variety of fibers including merino, silk, BFL, and cashmere. The summer palette was created by us and hand dyed especially for you. Majority of colors and bases are seasonal favorites. We hope you love working with them. Can't wait to see your finished project. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with the color. This is the color I got. There's nothing. Okay. So that was a lace weight. The color was cornflower blue, which is like a really light blue color. Um, and I pretty much immediately went into the trade thread to trade it. And the reasons for that are because it was remarkably similar to what I got in my February box, which was also a light blue lace weight. I think you can see like my project right up there. Like in the top corner, that's what I made. <laughs> you guys have already seen it. It was at Witchy Woman Shawl. And then um, I, maybe in my last video, I showed you guys that I was in progress on something and then I've since finished it. Um, and it was a shawl for Alan's grandma who had some like health things going on. And he ended up going to St. Louis to see her. Um, and it was almost the exact same color. And then I received the Fiberista, which was almost the exact same color. It just seemed too redundant. So normally I would love that color and lace weight, but I just wasn't into it. So I initiated a trade and some people got mint. Like, so I'll show you. Um, the person that I, oh, that's coming unscanned. The person that I asked um, if they were interested in a trade, they said yes. So what they sent me was their fingering. This is a... 50% merino, 50% tussa silk. Um, I told you too far. In this beautiful mint color. I love this color. It's like, I'm all about this right now. Um, so I, like I'm trying, I have so many like, it's like everything connects to the next thing. So I'm trying to figure out what order to go in. So I, so I received this yarn and I decided to cast on for um, a mystery shawl. So if you guys are doing the same mystery shawl or you have interest in it and you don't want to see it, I'll put a time like right here that tells you what you can skip forward to so you won't see the mystery. But what I, it's, um, one of the people who read my blog and it's a buddy on Ravelry showed me this, uh, pattern so I can't even take credit for finding it. She's doing it as well. I didn't ask if I could say her name, so I'm not going to. But thank you. I've already said thank you for showing me the pattern because it's just fantastic. So I started on this pattern, and you will see that it's no longer on a cable. And it's for a reason. So this pattern, though, I mean, this is some pretty intense lace, but I am all about it. It is a, like, half pie shawl. It has this beautiful, like, flower increasing petal motif on it. Um, I mean, so much fun. This is, like, so clue one, and then I think I put in this lifeline that you can kind of see. And then I got through clue two on to just, like, the very beginning of clue three. And then, unfortunately, I started seeing, like, little spots of like a brown yellow color in my yarn and it definitely I mean you guys can tell this is like very clearly mint um in those discolorations they just look like a mistake to me so I stopped and I contacted Fibrista about it and I received a reply I've said this before like they're all, they always get back to me really quickly so I received a reply saying that they would replace the skein and to go ahead and check my second one and see if there was a problem in, in there as well. So that's why this is all like loose is because I opened it up and I was kind of combing through it. And you know, I don't see any spots in this one, 
but I also didn't see any spots in this one. So I'm, I don't know, it's a little frustrating. Um, I'm thrilled that they're going to replace my discolored skein, but I've like, I think Clue 4 has been released. Clue 5, actually, probably Clue 5 came out today. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to catch up. So I'm a little frustrated and I don't, this pattern is like so fun and I just wanted to just barrel through and love it and have it in this beautiful shade and then I got kind of like stalled at the beginning of it and now I'm just like I don't know kind of over it and annoyed so some good some bad the other thing is and I would be really curious for your guys's feedback on this so I have worked with silk blends before and they've always been like 70% merino 30% silk or maybe like an 80 20 something like that I actually have let me see if it's still here yeah okay so this little cake is um Fino from Menno Still Uruguay and I did one of my follow your arrow shawls in this and this is like a squishy single ply silk blend so you get a little sheen to it but it's still very like gushy um and this like I want, I want to ask you guys about silk blend yarns that you've worked with before and what you're used to. This is, as you can see, like very, hopefully my nails aren't too horrible, sorry. You can see it's like a, I don't know if it's going to focus, like really tightly plied and it doesn't really feel like yarn. It feels kind of like, does that make any sense? It feels like I'm knitting with like, almost like a cotton string instead of a yarn, which is very strange to me. And then you guys see like, this is pattern is supposed to be knit on fingering. This is kind of like a light fingering on a size six, I believe. So I swatched this on a three and on a five and I ended up doing a five, but it feels very like, like slinky. I keep comparing it to like those cotton produce bags that people knit. Do you guys know what I mean by that? I've never made one, but I've definitely seen them before. And that's what the properties of this feel like. Um, I just don't really know what to make of it. I, I'd be really curious to see if you guys have worked with like a 50-50 merino silk blend and what you think of it and how it turned out. I did do a little test swatch and I blocked it and... It was the same. It was like very slinky. Like this Hank is very like drapey and slinky, which I, that's all I can describe it as, which are properties that I would kind of associate with silk. But I just don't know. I'm not really sure. I like love the color so much and I was really, really excited to get the fingering. Um, but I'm just not sure. I feel like it almost has to be like a really open weave sweater and that's really the only thing that's going to work well with it and that maybe a shawl just isn't the way to go. I just don't know. I don't know. I'm like, I'm not annoyed. I'm just kind of like, I just don't know what to do. I have no idea what to do here. So this kind of leads into why I've decided to cancel Fiberista. One moment. You guys see my minion? <laughs> I like, when the first Despicable Me came out, my best friend in Michigan and I went desperately searching for anything minion related. And there was literally nothing. And then the second one came out and it's like min minions everywhere. All you see are minions. You can like minion everything. That's crazy. So I have a minion cup. It's adorable. I love it. <laughs> Um, so Fiberista Club. Getting stuff like this is kind of why I'm canceling. You know, I'm not unhappy with the yarn. It's just like, it's just not something I would pick. And I think I realized that, let me think, I like what I want to say. It's just like, 
I, I'm not up for the element of surprise. I guess it just really comes down to that. You know, I like a very specific kind of yarn. When I went into this whole subscription club, my reservation was more about the colors. I was really worried they were going to send me a color that I like hated. And I think so far I've gotten maybe one color that I wasn't too comfortable with, but I've kind of come around on. So it really hasn't been the color that's the problem. It's the yarn. I really like a very like narrow <laughs> set of yarn. Like lately it's been all lace and fingering and that's really it. And then even within that, I like a certain type of yarn. So, you know, last month we got that Northbound Knitting DK beautiful yarn. I was really, really happy with it, but I just don't know what to do with it. You know, I like making shawls that are maybe like 550, 600, 700, even like give me 900 yards of fingering and I am all about it. And if I get like, you know, what is it? Like 460 yards of DK weight. I just don't know what to do with it. It'll probably turn into like a hat or some fingerless gloves, which would be something that actually be, you know, useful for once. But aside from that, I can't remember the last time that I spent money on anything above like a fingering weight, really. So to that end, I decided to subscribe to Yarnbox, Yarnbox Socks. Um, this is what it comes in. It's not actually in here right now, um, but I decided to test it out because the deal with sock yarn is that it's always going to be, you know, 400, maybe up to 475 yards. And I was thinking, you know, if this is like right around 25 bucks and I love it, maybe a double sock subscription, which is going to get me anywhere from like 800 to 900 plus yards um, which I can use to make socks or fingerless mitts if I do want something like that or big shawls. You know, if I get enough colors together, I can make a fingering weight cardigan. Like Maybe this is much more up my alley. I decided to test it out. So I received my June yarn. And, you know, me trying to micromanage everything, I was thinking like, I love sock yarn. This is great. Like, what could possibly go wrong? Well, <laughs> the one thing I don't love is sparkles. And I know that people are like crazy for sparkles. I know that people love it. It's just not really my style. So I... I mean, that sounds like a really negative review, which definitely is not because I ended up loving what I received. I'm going to insert... Um, a picture from that unboxing video as well, just so you guys can see it in the cake, or not cake, in the skein form. This yarn. So here's what I got. This is, oh, it even looks good on screen. The brand is Molly Girl Yarn Diva Fingering, 435 yards. I already told you guys the mix. The colorway is called A Face to Call Home. Website is mollygirlyarn.com. there. So I have since balled it up and you guys can see the colors. Like I just sparkle aside, you know, which is definitely not ideal. Love. I love this colorway so much. This is like totally my style, all about it. So I pretty much immediately checked out Molly Girl's website and then linked over to her Etsy shop. And we're going to jump around a little bit because this is all, you know, I have like a work in progress and then like a subscription box and now like stash enhancement. I checked out her website and she was doing something that I found very cool, which was, you know, right after I decided to cancel one subscription box, I threw caution to the wind and decided um, to purchase a mystery box. So she said what she was doing was cleaning out old inventory so she said it would be like retired bases or just extra colorways my back hurts sorry um and what I got was a I wish I had it here but it's like a USPS priority flat rate box you guys know what those are so the small one is like maybe this big by like that thick or so and then you could and the price was 
$45. And then there was a medium for $90. I don't know if she did a large. And she said, like, you can say what you like, but this thing is just going to be stuffed with whatever. Total mystery. So I said, I told her, like, I love sock yarns. I love, like, blues and greens and hot pink and, you know, naturals and grays and all of this stuff. And I just pretty much said, like, I really don't like red <laughs> and, like, orange. Otherwise, I'm pretty much good with everything. And I honestly don't know if she took it into account or not, but I, like, made out pretty good for 45 bucks. Um, I didn't say it. My birthday was two weeks ago. I turned 32. Ugh, feeling very old. Um, so this was like my, you know, I just got all that stash from my mom. So the last thing I need right now is yarn. But I told myself this was like my birthday present and therefore it was okay. The way we rationalize things. So I had these stashed away in my stash. This is how I like store. I put things in plastic baggies and then I squish all the air out and then seal them. So I pulled these out of storage so I could show you. So crammed in that tiny little box was these two skeins. These are, and it says right here, regular price on these is $16 a piece. This is a DK weight, um, 150 yards, 100% baby merino. The colorway is called This Is For Real. And these, there's two of them. So I already know 100% that this is going to be a pair of either gloves or fingerless gloves or mitts for winter. It's this tonal kind of like awk. Would you guys call this like, I always like, I feel like people have different definitions of teal and aqua. And I unfortunately use the two interchangeably and I don't think that they're interchangeable. It's just like, yeah, like aqua blue, I guess, or like a bright aqua. It's like a it's a tonal blue, very pretty, very soft, plied, should be nice and durable. Did I say if it's super wash? Guess not. Beautiful, excited, great. So that was in the box, these two. I'm going to run out of space on my desk. And then the next thing up was, this is... Molly Girl Yarn, of course. This it, It's coming across as royal blue, but it's actually purple. It looks almost the same color as my shirt, but it's definitely not. It's like a very, very vibrant purple. I don't know if I can get the monitor to change colors. Sort of. Okay, so it says... There's a bird outside my window freaking out. Um, it says one night only. It says one night only skeins are special. It could be a unique colorway, limited run base, or a combination of both. So this base is called Baseline. Oh, all of her, all of her stuff is like musically named. So Baseline, um, fingering, 460 yards. It's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, and I don't know if this would be called like a defect, but I don't think so. I think it's kind of cool. So it's this like. It's called Grapeonado, Grapeonado, I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced, but like grape is a perfect, perfect word to describe it. It is super, 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 super vibrant purple. So there we go. I don't know. I have honestly no idea if I would pair this with something for a shawl or just make, everybody's talking about this little Rose City Rollers ankle sock, and I, of course, am into it too, because everyone is right now, um, just make like a ton of little ankle socks out of this or something, so I got this, and then I got another thing, which has already been wound up, and that is the exact same base as this, so it's that baseline fingering, 460 yards, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, in this color, which, I mean, I'm trying to decide how it's coming across on screen. It's more a vibrant green. It's kind of like an emerald green than this is showing right here. Um, but it's already balled up and, as you can see, in progress. So when this failed, if I'm 
you've been getting into trouble. You got dirt on your face. Um, when my mint failed, I was like, I don't want to get behind. I like really want to keep going. So what do I have on hand that would work? And I saw these two sitting next to each other. And technically the shawl is written as a two color. So I was thinking like, this really works. These two totally work together. So I am, I won't show it in case you don't want to see the mystery. I'm through the second clue, just starting the third. And I'm using this as my main color. And then I think in clue five, we start with an accent color. And that's going to be this right here. So it kind of worked out. So for 45 bucks, I got this, I got this, and I got this. I think that's a great deal. I was pretty excited about it. So to continue my rationale, which is kind of all tied together for why I quit Fiberista Club, is so I'm finding all these like this brand, all these really great independent dyers. A lot of people I'm following on Instagram, a lot of people I'm finding just like through other podcasters. And I'm Julie from Diary of a Yard Stop. I'm sure I'll talk about her more than once during this. Um, has bought this beautiful yarn from this company in Australia called Skein Yarn. And Skein has a subscription club. It's just one skein of yarn per month, but it's always the same base. And I just told you guys that my frustration is that I don't really have control over what the base is. Hers is, um, it's one of her sock yarns. So, you know, it's always going to be, for me, kind of like an ideal... You're breathing so heavy. Hi, bun. <sighs> it's always going to be the same base, and it's going to be a base that I know what to do. So, uh, like, I can always find a use for it. So, I don't know if it was Julie or somebody else, but in the skein threads, they said, can you just do a double subscription? And she said, sure, she would just refund the shipping cost for the second subscription, so you wouldn't have to pay double shipping. Um... I think it works around, it's like a really good price. It's in Australian dollars and I know she just had to raise her rates, but I think that for both of them, you're right around like 45 bucks, which is a really good deal. And then, you know, we all have different tastes. It's what makes the world go around. You know, we're not all going to love the same things, but I feel like the colors that I've been getting in Fibre's Club, all good colors, but maybe not as like amazing is what I really want to see and I looked at the spoilers for skein yarn and you talk about colors that I'm all about just beautiful maybe I can insert some of them here so you guys can see or you can check it out on Ravelry just like vibrant and a little crazy and really 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 beautiful colors that are totally up my alley so as things stand, for now, I'm just like rambling. Fiberista Club, I have two more months left and then I'm done. I am still getting yarn box socks. I've had one month. We'll see how that goes. I'm just doing month to month so I can cancel that at any time. And then I have not subscribed to Skein, but it's kind of like in the back of my mind. I'm thinking that maybe I need to take a break from subscription clubs for a little bit because I have like so much yarn and it's not, the last thing I need is more yarn coming in every month. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to watch that one. And I think if I subscribe to another one, that is going to be the one. So that is why I didn't put up an unboxing video. That is all about yarn box. Um, that is a little bit of what I've been working on and yeah. Okay. So next up, I said that I had some finished objects. So the sh I, unfortunately I don't have it here. The shawl that I was doing for Alan's grandma done. I finished it in like 10 days. It was lace weight, which was just really dumb on my part. Um, I don't even know if I have a picture that would be suitable to share, but it was, I, I, if I was smart, I would have picked something other than lace weight when I only have a week to get something like knit and blocked. So I pretty much just like made it as big as I physically could manage in those in that time and then sent it off. Um, I, I, I mean, she said she liked the finished object and I hope that she did because 
my knitting storage boxes are over there and somebody just got a little curious. She didn't mess anything up. I'm not going to yell at her. Um, so that is done. That is one of my finished objects. And then the other one that I finished is this, I don't know if I ever talked about it on video, but I did a recent blog post where I showed where I had like way too many objects in progress right now. I have something, I had something like six, maybe more objects in progress at, at once. And I was trying to like, I got to focus and get through some of these. So one of those was this Westminster shawl. I cannot take credit for finding this pattern. Um, Julie, I told you I would mention her more than once from Diary of a Yarn Snob found it. And she wanted to try out lace work. And I told her that I thought it was a pretty ideal pattern to start lace work. So I have finished my, Julie, I'm sorry, I didn't want to like show mine off until you were done with yours, but then I knew you set yours aside. Um, so I apologize. But mine is done. I actually, so we both modified the pattern to change the sides to be stockinette instead of garter stitch. And then I made some other modifications. Um, before I forget, this is Malabrigo Finito. I actually had this same yarn in progress on another, on a pattern that I was kind of writing myself. And then I like changed something on the fly when I was like seven eighths of the way done with this like shawl that I loved and it was going really well. And it just freaking ruined it. <laughs> it totally destroyed the whole shawl and I threw it in a box and I haven't touched it in like a year. So I frogged that and I put that yarn to use in this. So it is, um, oh my gosh, I don't even have the tag for it. I knit it on a size five, my new carbons. Um, so you have this lace panel that's just in the middle and then you have these kind of like wings on this side. Um, so the modifications I made in the pattern, I think you like go right into the lace pattern. And I decided to start with just maybe like two or three rows of garter stitch at the top to frame it. And then um, on the lace repeats, I did add an, a whole extra repeat over here. It's something like eight or nine stitches, I don't remember. So here you can see. And then I imagine, I mean, you could always wear it. Around the shoulders, it fits well. It's like such an awkward thing to put this on while people are watching around the shoulders or what I would probably do is, oh, I got a little tail. Let's finish it right now. I pulled this like from the guest room where it was laying after blocking. Okay, tail's gone. I would probably wear it with the lace in the front and then just, yeah. like a little cowl handkerchief thing. It gets really cold in our shop in the winter, um, but I'm running around too much to have a jacket on, so you could just wear something like this. So yeah, there we go. I am pleased. I don't, I don't know. I'm like, it's a very good pattern, especially for somebody who is new to lace work. My husband's calling from the road. He wants, okay. He was like approaching his destination. I just wanted to check in. So I don't know. Here, Westminster done. Um, this yarn, this is the Finito. I think I said that. Um, I cannot pronounce the colorway, so I'm not going to say it, but it's this lovely mix of like greens and blues. This blocked up really, really soft, like lovely. I... Don't remember, I got this um, at a yarn store in Casper, Wyoming, and I think it was on sale. That was the only reason I bought it, honestly. So I don't know what full retail price is for it, um, but this would make a lovely sweater. Beautiful, it's beautiful. I did not alternate my skeins, and I think when I look at it as a whole, I would never notice, but now that I'm holding it up close, you can kind of, do I see, it's like what, like right here is where the change is. Doesn't matter, don't even care. 
So this is done. And then the other thing I've done is that I've frogged <laughs> some projects. I already talked about these on the blog. I don't have them here. It doesn't really matter. Um, so let's talk about what I got in progress. The biggest thing, I mean, I showed you my mystery shawl that I have in progress. I really wanted to catch up with the pace of the clues as they were actively coming out so I could like follow along on Instagram and stuff. It's just not going to happen. I got totally delayed by the problem with my first yarn and then I didn't get back into it with my second yarn fast enough. But it doesn't really matter because I have all but scheduled my entire July by volunteering to test knit a sweater. So I showed you guys what I was planning to do for my first sweater. And I finally realized like, whoa, um, the construction and knitting of it wasn't particularly difficult. It just seemed really, I finally rationalized like, hey, dummy, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't dedicate such intense construction when you don't even know how this thing is going to fit you at all. And it's like a pretty structured knit. So I, I mean, I still love the pattern and I still want to make it someday, but like, Maybe now is not my time. So I I hate being a tease. It's like the worst thing when people are like, I'm working on something secret. But I, per the test knit, like I can't share it. She said no. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you what yarn I'm using. I decided to use the same yarn. It called for fingering. Um, this is that Knit Picks palette. I've showed you like eight times now because I keep trying to come up with a pattern. The yarn has found its pattern. Um, and then... I needed a second color and I happen to have this Knit Picks palette. I showed you guys this ages ago when I bought it. I bought it because it was on sale. But this is like, this is their standard colors. There's like, there are so many colors. If you ever want to do um, color work, so, so, so many. And then this is their palette. I think it's called, maybe I have it right here. Boom. Knit Picks palette tonal special reserve. And this colorway is called Gull. This is um, just like regular palette, 100% Peruvian Highland wool. In this skein, there are 462 yards. Um, it's fingering weight. There we go. Uh, so this is my accent color. And this is like a, a tonal, like light gray to medium gray. And then this is like a medium. I think this color is called silver. So the color or the sweater is predominantly this color, but this is like a little accent piece. And it's working out beautifully. I wish I could show you, but she said no. And it's my first test knit, so I'm not going to, like, make somebody angry. Um, the reason I decided to test knit this sweater, even though I hadn't knit a sweater before, uh, was because it is very, like, slouchy and oversized. And, I mean, she planned the pattern with something like 12 inches of ease. And I went way up from there. So I talked about how I'm, like, pair the pair of all pairs so my bust I mean like you guys don't need to know all about my personal details but my bust is probably like closer to like 40 inches hi buddy um and I went to like the largest size I'm making the biggest size so it is like that's like 20 inches of positive ease but that is to account for my hips like I just don't know how it's gonna fit so it's gonna be super slouchy but the the Unlike my really structured cardigan that I was working on, which is not designed to be slouchy and oversized, this is intended to be slouchy and oversized. I'm like so excited about it. I think it's going to work beautifully. I just noticed that my swatches are here so you guys can see. I tested the regular. I didn't block this one. I tested this on size seven needles, and with, um, which is not what the pattern called for. I was just trying to meet gauge. Um, and it's a little too open. So this is on, this is the tonal on size six. Beautiful. So I've talked about palette so many times before, but, um, it is not like a soft yarn. It's not squishy and gushy. It's like hearty and not scratchy, but like a little rugged. But after blocking, this is like beautiful. I'm really excited for it. I'm really excited for the pattern. I'm really excited for the sweater and I'm really excited with how the yarn is working. Um, the only negative that I have, I'm going to try and like slide my thing down, is these here carbons that I was so excited about. One of them broke. I couldn't believe it. It slipped out of this metal 
right here. So of course I immediately sent an email to Webs, which is where I purchased my kit from. And they responded quite promptly and said that they have a no questions asked policy on returns, not returns on replacements. It asked me if just one needle or both needles were affected. So, and I sent him a photo, of course, I'm not trying to deceive anyone. So, you know, I'm bummed that it separated, but it's going to be replaced immediately. There we go. <laughs> immediately, which is good. So that's where I wish I could show you. I really, I don't like being like a tease about it, but that's where I am with that. And then one of the blogs, one of the blogs and podcasts that I mentioned last time, which is truly Myrtle, um, Libby, I said it was one of my favorites. She is hosting a knit along for July. And I got like so much shiz going on in July that really the last thing I should do is join another knit along, but I did it anyway. So she came out with a pattern recently that is called Rattan. I'm going to insert a picture right here. So the pattern is designed to be knit with just one skein of fingering weight yarn. Something actually like this would have been perfect for it. But I really wanted to find a use for that Dreaming Color Perfectly Posh Sport. This is Wild Orchid colorway that I got um, in my very first February stuff box. I felt like I was getting all this yarn and then just being like, oh, this is great. And then just sitting on it I was determined to use this. So this is not fingering. It is actually a sport weight. So just a little bit up from there. And then I think it originally called for a size five. So I went up to a seven. And then I'm going to be honest right now, I am not doing the pattern justice because the pattern is written with twisted rib. And I love the look of twisted rib, but I got this bad boy like consuming my life. And I just wanted something simple mindless so I'm not doing the twist in the rib I personally love the look but I find it a little cumbersome to do and I wanted something that I could just like zone out on plow through it you know so I'm not doing a twisted rib which I think do isn't doing the pattern full justice nevertheless I'm still doing it so this is I've started, um, one of the things that makes it so beautiful is she has just blocked like the daylights out of it. So this is like super squishy and springy. So I'm really excited to block it and see how it goes. Um, these are my carbons size seven. This is just like an old knit picks cable because it's one of the longest ones I had. Uh, as this progresses, I will decide if one skein, um, let me think. I think these skeins are 320 yards. The pattern calls for right around 400 yards of fingering. So I don't know if because this is sport, if I'm going to end up with something like sufficiently sized after one skein, or if I'm just going to go all the way and use both skeins of this. I haven't really decided yet. So I'll have to just keep you posted on how that's coming along. Um, but that's my work in progress. So I guess that's it. I mean, technically three but I that mystery knit along the through the loops one I'm kind of set aside because I'm not really feeling inspired <laughs> anymore because of the setbacks with it and I am just like so super pumped about this test knit sweater that I'm doing that it's kind of like consuming all my time anyway you know and the other thing is we what is today I don't know what today is like the 29th 29th um, this time next month, we will be in Las Vegas, which I'm very excited for. Um, we are going for work trip, uh, for one of our manufacturers. It's like the annual meeting. It's where they release new products. It's where they let us test drive things. And then because we're making the trip to Vegas, it's like a three day conference. Um, my best friend and her boyfriend are coming into town so we can hang out for a few more days. So holy Vegas, we're going to be there for like six days, seven, which is like way, way too much time to be in Vegas. After like the third day, it starts to like, like the haze <laughs> separates and you're like, what am I doing here? But you know, we have like three days of conference and that's like, this is like the one that I went when we went to Disney, 
that was a snow conference and this one in Vegas is ORV so off-road vehicles so it's like the summer and the winter ones um so it's like all day all night dinners programs busy busy so for those first few days we will see little to nothing of Vegas and then um for the last four days we'll be with my best friend and her boyfriend and have a great time so seven days way too much but it won't be like seven days full on Vegas craziness um the other thing is that while we're there it actually falls over our anniversary so I like maybe I should let, let me know if you guys want to know I haven't really talked about like how Alan and I met but we got married in Vegas after this exact same conference three years ago um it was in Vegas three years ago it's not always there it kind of moves around three years ago it was in Vegas and we like I won't get into the whole thing we just added on a day to our trip and we're like oh, let's get married so we planned ahead like two or three weeks but that was really it so we're gonna be back in Vegas um and I think our conference might actually be at the same hotel which is kind of fun it was at the first time it was at the Palazzo and we got married at the Venetian and I think it is at the Palazzo Venetian again so that's kind of sweet that's fun um we will be in Vegas we're switching hotels after the conference because we cannot afford to stay at the Venetian for a week it is pricey uh, we're moving over to one of the like younger cheaper hotels uh, so I don't think we'll be actually at the Venetian on our actual anniversary but psh, we're not one for holidays and events so it doesn't really matter it's just it's fun that we're gonna be back there it'll be our three-year anniversary so if you guys want to hear the banana story of how we met which is like totally outside the scope of knitting but if you're curious just let me know and I'll talk about it sometime um yeah so I think we leave Wyoming on like July 25th so if I want to not want to I like have to I said I would finish this test knit and I want to um complete the knit along then I got some work ahead of me so that is really all that's going to consume my time for a while um I think I have like two more things that I want to chat about and then we will call it a day on the rambling. Okay, so I want to talk about ball winders for a second. I, this thing, I have the Knit Picks ball winder. Um, have you guys used these before? So it has a clamp. I'll just run through it really quick. It has a clamp on the bottom. This little arm, you like weave your yarn through it. And then it makes like a nice cake on here. And you just like turn this. Here's the deal. This was clamped to my desk, which is pretty much where it lives. My desk is um, from Ikea, like legs and tabletop. So it's like the size of a pretty much a dining room table. So I just leave this clamped on and it doesn't get in the way. In this freaking piece of crap would not turn wouldn't turn refused and now come on I'm like so annoyed and riled up right now so let me tell you this saga we got this beautiful beautiful yarn and this is not intended to be a litany of complaints but I'm like riled up it, the skeins were too big for the yarn so if my yarn swifts right over there but I'm not gonna grab it they're like mine's like an umbrella and it like opens up and the skein was too big for the swift even at like it's way biggest point so I had to like loop it around like a hook so that it wouldn't get tangled and then twist and the loop was so tangled I wound for like hours hours and then I stopped and then I started again the next day so I think that's I mean I did mention it before but I think that's part of the reason I don't even want to proceed on this shawl again is because the thought of having to wind two more skeins makes me want to die um and it was like wound around itself like you know you have a skein and it's just like a loop and it's supposed to like come off the loop come off the loop come off the loop somehow the the strands were like wound like through like this so I actually had to take the cake off here pass it through and then try and I don't even know so that is when things started to go south I think I like worked this thing bunny come here okay 
she goes into a major protection mode whenever Alan's not home. She like literally will stand guard at the door and not let me <laughs> leave a room. I mean, it's very sweet. She's just looking out for me. He says, I told Alan about it. He's like, that's what she gets paid to do. So that is life with the German Shepherd. Um, so I think I just like worked this thing to death trying to wind these skeins. So then I was trying to wind this and these like no skein problems fit on the Swift just fine. But it was like turning, 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 turning. And it was like, I can't even describe it. This literally wouldn't move like rigid, wouldn't move at all. And my cakes started turning into like these flying saucer shapes. Here's the discovery. If you guys ever have that happen with this specific ball winder, you gotta take the screw off. I have like a screwdriver with my knitting needles because I had to do this. You got, you take the screw off and what I found, if it starts to get like, it doesn't make a nice cake, it starts getting like, like literally like a flying saucer. Um, the gear, like the little plastic pieces down here have just kind of come misaligned and you like realign those cogs together and then you're good to go. So literally 30 seconds before I picked this up, this arm wouldn't move at all and the only thing that I can think is that for some reason like when you clamp it to a table it puts pressure on this right here and that's why it wouldn't turn I just want to know have you guys ever had that problem happen if I hadn't picked this up to show you guys I would have thought it was 100% broken before I started filming I was looking for new ball winders on Amazon so I originally picked this up to complain and ask you guys for a suggestion for a better, better ball winder it would appear as though my I call I want to call it a piece of junk because I'm so angry but I love this thing dearly it, my mom had an extra one she gave it to me I use it constantly I love it I'm like devastated at the thought of it being broken so I don't know explain to me why when it's clamped the arm won't turn but when it's free the arm will turn I got nothing I have no idea I'm gonna try it again right now you guys I don't even know if you can see oh well, it's my old rug back there I'm like twisting it to the tabletop I don't even know. I got, I have no idea. So I've like hand wound old school style, like four balls recently when that was working perfectly. I've taken it off the table like 25 times. So it's not like that was the simple solution that I just didn't know about. I mean, I can't fake this stuff. This is live video. This is what happens. Um, the other thing is just kind of like a chatty thing. So I, through Julie of Diary of Yarn Snob, again, have joined my first yarn swap. I always see these things. And I was so nervous to do one because I feel like it's always my luck that I like, of course, everybody wants to send really good stuff. But I feel like I try and send like really amazing stuff. And then, I mean, I've never done one before. It's never gone poorly. I'm not saying it has, but I feel like I would be the one to get something that would just be like, it's not even whether I like it or not, because if somebody put thought into it, then who cares? Like, it's just, if somebody put thought into what they're sending, then that's amazing. And who cares if I like it or not? But I just worried so much that I would get somebody who just like threw a bunch of crap together or forgot about it or didn't send it. Like, that's always what happened to me in Secret Santa. Like, somebody forgot and they're like, oh, I'll bring it tomorrow. And then you're like, well, that's a bummer. So I like really want to send stuff and I'm really excited about it. And I finally decided that this is one to go for because hello, the group is called Diary of a Yarn Snob. Like we all know what kind of yarn Julie likes. And I think that like it's a really good group of people. So I have been, my concerns about yarn swaps were like well before I signed up for this. So I have actually chatted with my partner, very excited about it. I think it's going to go great. But what I'm curious about is this is my first one. So I want to know what kind of stuff, like, have you guys done them before? And what kind of stuff do you send? What kind of stuff have you received? I, I mean, it's very unfortunate that we don't have a local yarn shop because I can't like run over there and just buy 
a bunch of fun stuff. We have one in Jackson Hole. It is quite nice. It's called Knit on Pearl. And I went there last weekend, I think, and I picked up a beautiful skein of yarn and something else that's fun I'm not going to talk about. I think she might watch. So hi, if you're watching, I'm not going to talk about what I got and spoil it, but I got a beautiful skein of yarn and I got like a little extra thing. And then I'm trying to figure out like, what are other good things to send? I know a lot of people send tea. Um, I like tea, but I, I'm not really a tea drinker. So I don't have like types of tea <laughs> available to send. Um, it would be like, one of the three kinds of tea that I just happen to have and happen to like, which I can certainly do, but I don't want to buy like 20 kinds of tea just to send a sample of tea. Um, maybe I should start drinking tea. Maybe. Uh, I know all knitters seem to like tea. I'm more of a coffee person, but I do enjoy it. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about sending like little like treat snacky things. I have one really good one that I happen to like, actually a few that I'm going to include. And then the other thing that I don't know if this is like inappropriate for swaps, but what I wanted to do was send some like very Wyoming things. Um, you know, we moved here from Detroit and Wyoming is kind of like this crazy land <laughs> still to this day, even three years later. So I don't know if that would be interesting. Like if you guys were in a swap and you know, you're from Michigan, which is where I'm from and somebody from Texas would you want like a bunch of Texas things like from me would you want a bunch of Wyoming things is that a good idea even if they're not knitting related or is that like not okay does it have to be just knitting stuff and then I was thinking like like do people send little like things like this like this is just a little row counter which I happen to love again my mom had an extra one and she gave it to me um I don't want to change my row. I'm sure I'm using this for something. Do people send like little stuff like this or is it only like, you know, the stitch markers that I use? These are my honestly, legitimately my favorite stitch markers, but they're just like, boom, like clover <laughs> basic. I love them so much. I think the colors are really cute and they're really, really good, but I don't, I've never used like cute stitch markers. Do people send like stitch markers? And then I was thinking like little tags you know the like with the wash instructions that kind of stuff um I don't know so let me know let me know what you guys get the other thing is like the the swap that we're doing is definitely for a full-size skein but are people always interested in getting mini skeins because I think it's kind of a fun idea to share my hair is going crazy to share just like here are a dozen yarns that I've tried out and maybe you haven't tried them but even if you're not working on a mini skein project, you can still like, it's a cool way to be able to feel a bunch of different yarns before you like invest in a whole skein of it. So maybe I'll send some of that. And then, yeah, just let me know what else. Let me know what you guys like to get and like to send in swaps because I feel like I'm like so new to it. I don't want to mess up and do it. I want to do like a really good job. This is like the, the student in me, the one who couldn't miss class and never got a detention and wanted to be good at stuff like I it's my first swap and I want to be like the best at it which is that's just my personality guys I think I'm done I'm like it's now like 10 o'clock I've been doing this for far too long and then you might have noticed that my energy changed for the second half I talked to Alan and he just I mean he's like my best friend so I was really excited to talk to him and I'm like in a good mood and I think we will stop there. So since I'm not doing the unboxing videos anymore, I am thinking about starting to do a yarn chat every two weeks or so. That is the hope. I don't want to promise anything. Our um, business is going well and we've had kind of a busy summer. So I don't want to like overcommit to something. But I'm really loving YouTube. The craziest thing to me if you guys have a blog and a YouTube channel, maybe share this with me. It's like my blog, maybe it sucks. I don't know. Uh, that's fine if it does. I, I apologize if it sucks. <laughs> but I have been blogging for like years. This month is not a good example because I have been very quiet. But I feel like it took me like a, a really, really long time to get traction. And maybe people are just into video. Because I mean, by no means is this a big channel at all. Um or will it ever be but I feel like I've gotten way more interactions and like I don't like the word subscribers because it's like such a 
So just separation between like me and you. Subscribers is a horrible word, but it's what YouTube calls them. Um, way more subscribers, like more quickly. So I don't know if people are just more receptive to video or if like I'm horrible at blogging <laughs> or what, but um, I feel like YouTube is a medium that I enjoy and that I think I can stick with. So I like the idea of ramping this thing up to do it maybe once every two weeks or so. We'll see. Um, for now, I will stop the rambling and just say thank you for watching, of course. I mentioned before, but I am making strides to get all of my, my stuffs, my Ravelry and my Pinterest and my Instagram and my Facebook all on a similar name. So I should be available, I think, on Ravelry. I'm just Milkshed. On Instagram and Twitter, a milkshed blog. You can always find me here. My URL, you know by now, or I'll just put it in the box below. But um, yeah, if you guys want to find me anywhere, if you have any questions, if there's different kind of stuff that you want to see, if you can tell me the magic of this stupid ball winder, and if you tell me what kind of stuff you guys like to see in swaps, I would be eternally grateful. I would love that. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.